Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Maritime military operations are complex structures involving many elements that depend on each other for success. One of these factors consists of the supply of provisions that must be guaranteed for the development of missions. And to achieve a constant flow of these, the Navy developed the concept of prepositioning ships or prepositioned stock. This revolves around a strategic military logistics system where essential equipment, supplies, and resources are stored aboard vessels located in key ocean areas. Prepositioning ships is a key component of U.S. military logistics across various branches, including the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, and Defense Logistics Agency. A system of this type involves different types of ships, each with different characteristics that contribute to the logistics of operations. Of this group of vessels, the expeditionary transfer docks, originally called mobile landing platforms, stand out, serving as floating transfer stations. These are capable of carrying out large-scale logistical movements, such as the transfer of vehicles and equipment from sea to coast. These operations may involve vessels of various designs, as with LCACs that use the large vessels as docking stations during their amphibious missions. This allows for the rapid offload of military gear directly to shore, even in areas where traditional port infrastructure is unavailable or inadequate. The technology of the transfer docks makes unloading happen quickly and efficiently. Those vessels are capable of submerging partially by controlling the ballast system that can be filled with water to increase the weight and sink the ship deeper. Once submerged, the mission deck becomes a wet deck, which allows smaller craft like LCACs or other vehicles to float onto or off the platform. LCACs are positioned and prepared on the floating dock to receive vehicles and cargo, and considering the ship can receive up to three LCACs at once, the process can be faster and more effective. Through the transfer ramp, the crew can move the cargo to the LCAC, which is secured and tightened to the attachment points and ready to depart. During amphibious operations or training exercises involving the LCAC, the crew follows a series of similar procedures, where the semi-submersible capabilities of the transfer dock are used to deploy the vessels to the coasts quickly. Supposing this occurs during exercises like the Pacific Horizon, the troops train with repeated docking cycles and launching LCACs, enabling continuous and efficient equipment movement from ship to shore. The ability to maintain these cycles allows for sustained support of operations on shore, which is particularly useful in large-scale humanitarian assistance or disaster relief. 
at such deployments, either from the beaches or landing ships, the amphibious crafts must rely on their propulsion systems to move across the water. The hovercraft makes unloading happen quickly and efficiently, reducing the LCAC's exposure to any threats on the beach during missions. During the unloading process, vehicles and equipment drive off the LCAC onto the beach using its ramp, giving the craft strategic and tactical value. The development of mobile landing platforms was a task that, from the beginning, focused on two types of ships, the said ESD and the ESB, or Expeditionary Sea Base. The latter was built to serve as a mobile base that could support the different military operations of the U.S. Navy at a global level. The ESBs support special operations forces, airborne mine countermeasures, and other expeditionary missions, providing an adaptable infrastructure for rapid deployment, force staging, and maritime logistical support. Their design has allowed them to be a versatile vessel capable of functioning as a control platform and coordinating the most complex missions. They also have a wide 55,000 square feet flight deck that can handle multiple kinds of aircraft, including MV-22 Osprey and MH-60 Seahawk helicopters. The deck includes areas for mission-specific modules and aviation mine hunting systems deployable by helicopters for anti-mine warfare. With space for four aircraft to operate simultaneously, the ESB can launch, recover, refuel, and service helicopters and tilt rotor aircraft, providing the necessary support directly from the ship. This also means that part of the crew has aviation specialists who ensure that fueling and maintenance are conducted safely and efficiently. However, ESBs include more services in addition to aircraft support, including the ability to deploy and retrieve a mobile pier that is used as a platform for small boat operations. These capabilities are demonstrated during testing events, like the shortest ship exercise, where ground, air, and naval forces work together to support expeditionary, advanced base operational concepts. This exercise involved a CH-53E Super Stallion helicopter, lifting a joint light tactical vehicle to the USS Miguel Keith ESB. The aircraft picked up the JLTV from a secured beach training area in Okinawa, Japan, carrying it over water to the USS Miguel Keith. This aircraft simulation of an expeditionary advanced base provided training on delivering important equipment to an area where traditional logistical support would be difficult. The effectiveness of vessels such as the ESD and ESB has demonstrated the investment that has occurred in the development of different vessels that serve to streamline and improve the logistics of military operations.
An example of this is the Expeditionary Fast Transport Program, which provides the U.S. military with a series of agile vessels designed to transport personnel and cargo within a theater of operations. These TEPF vessels are built to be deployed quickly, reaching speeds of up to 35 knots, which makes them highly effective for short and medium transport within operational theaters. By having a shallow draft, the ships are capable of reaching smaller ports that are difficult for larger vessels to access. Ships like the TEPF have a 20,000 square foot mission bay, which can be tailored according to mission requirements. Here, the crew can accommodate vehicles, cargo, or equipment for various operational needs, from troop movement and supply transportation to humanitarian aid distribution. To easily accommodate this cargo, the vessel has a stern ramp to provide easy vehicle access to the mission deck, allowing the EPF to load and unload vehicles directly from shore. Thanks to this ship's feature, the crew and port members can enter cargo faster and coordinate the distribution of equipment more efficiently. Having a wide cargo bay, this ship can transport 600 tons of cargo over distances of up to 1,200 nautical miles, ideal for heavy logistics. In case of an evacuation operation, the EPF has seating for over 312 passengers and fixed berthing for 146 people, supporting moving civilians or personnel from crisis zones. All operations can be done by a small core crew of just 21 personnel, supported by Military Sea Lift Command, making it adaptable for military and civilian missions alike. As with the cargo boarding process, disembarking an EPF is carried out thanks to its large access ramp. Once the vessel arrives and docks at the dock, the crew and port members coordinate the operation to release the cargo and settle in the areas on land. Vehicles are normally driven by crew members, while other equipment is moved using tools such as forklifts provided by the port. The development and construction of ships, such as the ESB or the EPF, have modified how military operations are carried out. Its characteristics in providing supply support and logistics control in missions have managed to increase their efficiency and ensure that the risk of loss of equipment and personnel is reduced. This has shown a trend towards the development of similar, but more optimized systems focused on better coordination in the structure of missions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.